Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about reference variables. I'm going to go ahead and pull up my website here, javacjava.com. And I've added a few things here. Normally we click on the begin button and that'll take you to the Java tutorials and that's, that'll still work. I'll show you here, right? And we can scroll down and at the very end of all these we've got reference variables. But I was like, wow, this list is kind of getting crazy. So, you know, it's, it's, it's organized, you know, kind of from where you just get started, right? And then you got to learn all these things and then keep building on these to keep going into future tutorials for more advanced concepts. But what I thought I'd do is, is kind of separate um, the object-oriented programming stuff into its own little tutorial section here. So on the menu option over here, I've got now I've got Java tutorials and Java OOP tutorials, right? And you can access that um, directly from the main website too as well. Click on the little menu option. That'll pop out. And so under Java OOP, the object-oriented programming tutorials, I'm kind of in, keeping them in their own little separate grouping here even though they'll still be listed in the main main one there so we're going to go ahead and click on reference variables here <coughs> excuse me so reference variable is a variable that refers to an object hence the title reference every variable must have a type that is declared at compile time in other words in your source code file and the type must be either a primitive data type or an object type right so you've got type variable name and then a semicolon ending the statement. That's a simple declaration statement. You can't get any more simple than that, but it must have a type. You just can't say like um, variable name, right? Colon or variable name semicolon. It's not gonna work in Java because it's a strictly typed language. So um, when the type is an object type, the variable is called a reference variable, okay? So this would be a reference variable when the type is an object type. Reference variables can only be signed in object reference or the null literal. I'll get to that in a second here. An object is created using the Java keyword new. Reference variables must be declared as one of the following object types, class types, interface types, and array types. Now don't worry about interface types just yet. I will cover them in a future tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll explore some differences between primitive data type and a reference variable. Um, I will a primitive data type variable and a reference variable, sorry. I will also introduce you to a special no literal that can be assigned to a reference variable type. I'll put that in my website there. Okay, let's come down here and let's highlight all this. Got a bunch of code today. And control C to copy or right click and select copy. Um, let's go ahead and move the browser off screen here. We're gonna play around with a lot of new, new concepts today should give you a nice understanding here. So we'll go to start and then search, type in CMD to open up the command prompt. If you're running Windows 7 or earlier, you can go to start run, type in CMD. <coughs> First thing you want to do is type in Java C. Java C is the Java compiler. If you see all this stuff scroll by, then you've got it installed properly. If not, go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You'll need to make sure you have that installed and configured properly before continuing on. CLS to clear the screen. CD space backslash CD is changed short for change directory backslash tells it to go to the root. Uh, it's typed in MD, which is make directory. <coughs> Excuse me, let me get some water here. Okay, make directory Java. Um, I already have it, but if you didn't, it would go ahead and create it for you. We'll change directories to the Java folder. And now we'll type in uh, make directory and we'll call this uh, reference variables. Okay. And we'll change to that folder and we'll do notepad. Reference variables.java. Okay, yes. Okay, um, you'll notice I have two classes in here, right? I just stuck the box class in here just so um, it'll save us a little time in the tutorial rather than creating its own uh, box.java and compiling it separately there. So, very simple. Um, some instance variables here, and you'll notice they're not private. We can set them, set them using direct member access there. So initializing them all to zero, and then um, we got the method here, display volume, that'll return an int data type, and it'll simply return the calculation for the volume, length times width times height. 
Okay, so this is going to be our, our object throughout the tutorial here. So let's scroll back up to the top here. <clears throat> I'm just going to take this kind of in, in strides here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a multi-line comment of all this stuff basically all the way down to here. I'm not going to worry about the indentation on the multi-line comment because it's just going to be a temporary thing here. Um, let's save this. So reference variables is our class definition. Here's our main method entry point. First thing we're going to do. So what happens if we declare a primitive and a reference variable with no assignment, right? We just say int a semicolon. This is a primitive data type, right? And then we try to uh, display it to the console, right? We're going to get an error that the variable might not have been initialized. Let's try the same thing with a box object data type, right? And a the reference variable x. So we got the object data type, class type specifically, right? And this is good, so that's a box type, not an interface type or a array object type. So, and then we're going to try to display to the console this reference variable, and we're going to get the same error. X might not have initialized. Okay, let's go ahead and just run that real quick there. Or compile it and run it. <coughs> So that's what we get there, right? We get error, variable might not have been initialized. And then error here, variable x might not have been initialized. Right, so that, that works out the same. So we know, okay, all right, so you have to initialize them before use, especially if we're within a method here. So let's go ahead and comment those out. These two lines right here, we'll just take those and comment those out. And so we're still initialized, we're still declaring our primitive data type A and declaring our box X. All right, let's move this down here to our next little section. Let's save that. So what if we want to assign a harmless default initial value to the variable? So in the past, well, in prior tutorials, you've seen we just initialize it to zero, right? For the primitive numeric type, zero is a great harmless value. You know, if it's a, if it's a Boolean data type, right, then, um, Initializing that the false is, you know, usually nice harmless default value. So um, What about a object? Data type, right? So our reference variable X, we're going to set it equal to null. Now null is basically nothing And it's a great harmless default value. And so at this point in time X refers to nothing, right? It doesn't refer to zero. It just refers to nothing and that's what null is and null null literally like is you know what you want to set objects to if you want them to be equal to nothing but they do have to be initialized to null you can't just uh, do what we just learned up here you can't just try to use it if it hasn't been initialized so we're initializing this to null and then we'll display this out to the console here right a equals plus the value of a and x equals plus the value of x so let's go ahead and clear our screen let's recompile work it compiled just fine and strip that off so we're going to invoke the reference variables class using the java command line tool which is the java virtual machine right so we get a equals zero x equals null okay so now we know how we can kind of initialize these two default values right and we can use them later on if we like so let's just uncomment our next section here and um, now, what if we assign a reference variable to an actual object type and type, um, wait, what did I just type here? This is just, and, uh, we need to get that out there. Okay. A little typo in there. So what if we assign a reference variable to an actual object type and display the reference variable to the console? Okay. So we're going to assign it to an object type of box, right? That's an actual object type. And we're using the new keyword, right? So x equals new box, right? So now we're going to try to print out just plain old x, right? And see what happens. Um, you know what? I just want to comment this out to right here, actually. Save that. And I'm going to comment this line out, comment this line out. So basically at this point in time, 
when we say we initialize, we declared x up here, right? And then we set it equal to null, we initialized it to null. Now we're gonna assign it to a new box. So what happens when we actually print the value of x to the console? It's gonna be pretty, pretty interesting here. So let's go ahead and clear our screen. Hit the up arrow twice, hit the down arrow. And now we get x equals box at, and then we get this is actually a hexadecimal number here, right? So that is what x is actually equal to. Now, this box and this right here is the actual just basically, um, you know, without getting too ahead of myself here, it's just like a little memory location, arbitrary memory location somewhere. So let's go ahead and try something else real quick here. Let's create a uh, um, some new some new reference variables, right, of the box data type. So the first thing we're going to do is box y, and we're going to set it equal to null, so it's equal to nothing. We're initializing it to nothing. And then we'll do a box data type reference variable z equals new box, okay? And then we'll go ahead and print out to the console <coughs> um, what x, y, and z are. <coughs> Excuse me. So here's what we had for x, uh, y equals null, and now we have z has its own new box object, right, at some other little memory location, right? Okay, so <clears throat> this is hopefully is starting to, to make a little bit of sense. I know I'm really confusing right at the moment here, but let's keep on going here, and hopefully by the end of this that will just make complete sense. All right, so now I'm just gonna comment out all these console printouts here. We'll come down to this next little section here. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and take a look at this next section. All right, we can plainly see we have two box objects, right? That box object and this box object, right? And your numbers will differ. These numbers here are just random arbitrary memory locations there on my computer, right? So your numbers will probably be some other, I'm sure there'll be some other hexadecimal numbers. Now I will assign some values to the instance variables for each box object, right? Now since y is equal to null, we can't assign it to anything. It's not referring to any box object. But let's go ahead and set the uh, length, width, and height for the instance variables for the x reference, right? For the object that x is referring to. And same thing with the z. We'll do that, and then we'll go ahead and display our volumes here to the console for both of those. Okay, so our X volume is uh, 96, and our Z volume is 105. Okay, that's fantastic. I'm sure that's what that calculates up to. And now what we're going to do is Just comment out these these little lines, three lines here, as we move our way down, adding more and more to this. And let's go here. Let's save this. So now what will happen if I assign y to the x reference variable, right? So let's do that. Y equals x. Okay. And then we're going to print out the value of, of x, the value of y, and the value of z. Also, we're going to print out the volume of x, y, and z2 as well. Let's clear our screen. Okay, so x is equal to this object and y is equal to this object because we said y equals x. So you can see that y now refers to the same object that x refers to, right? And z still refers to a completely separate object. So the volume of x is 96, the volume of y is 96, and the volume of z is 105. All right, now let's see if we can kind of drive home the point about reference variables actually referring to an object, an instance of an object located in memory somewhere. So instead of commenting these out this time around, I am gonna take this one line up here though. I'm just gonna remove this. <coughs> 
get rid of that multi-line comment there. And now, what, uh, what will happen to y if I assign x to z, right? Because up here, we just assigned y to x, because originally y was null, and x referred to an object. So now, what will happen if I say x is now equal to z? Was y really equal, or like, say, pointing at x before, right? Or referring to x? So let's go ahead and compile this here, and then we'll come back. Yeah, compile, run it, and we'll come back. Okay, so I left this last section out there, right, where we said y is equal to x, and we can see that y, x and y are both pointing to this particular box object in memory. Z is pointing to this box object in memory, and here's their volumes. Now we assigned x to z, <coughs> and here's what we've got. x now equals... Sorry, I had to get some water here. X now equals the um, the object that Z was referring to, right? This box object here. Now Y still refers to the box object in memory that X originally was, okay? And Z, of course, refers to the same object that it always has been here. So now we can see X volume is 105, Y volume is 96, and Z volume is 105. So if we come back to our code here, um, we can definitely see that, that reference variables merely refer to an object, right? Y still has a reference to the object that we originally assigned to Z, and now X now has a reference to the object that we originally assigned to Z, right? So originally assigned to X, and now X is looking at the same object that we assigned to Z. So, um, <coughs> Hopefully by seeing this here right here this particular You know box at and then memory location here, right is basically saying okay We got in a box object at this memory location and we got this box object at this memory location So hopefully seeing this actually displayed to the console will help drive home the concept that you know a reference variable merely refers to an object and isn't actually the object itself now, back in my original tutorial when I was doing the introduction to classes and objects there, I kind of fibbed a little bit and said that the reference variable was the actual object, and you can use that uh, reference variable as an object to access its members. But now you kind of, I kind of had to do that. It's almost like saying, okay, you got to tell someone about the tooth fairy or something like that, or, or uh, Santa Claus, and then you discover, oh, it really isn't real. So, but... This is, this is an actual what a reference variable is. It just merely refers to an object, and the object is just a, um, an instance of an object located at a particular memory address. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this, close out of that. I'm gonna leave you with some final thoughts here on this one here. So hopefully this tutorial has cleared up a few things about the concept of an object. So a class defines the template or blueprint for members um, of an object, right? Stuff like variables, methods, so on and so forth there. Now, understanding that reference variables simply refer to an instance of an object is critical to learning more advanced concepts for object-oriented programming. So, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.